Good morning from uh, the second day of OER Congress. And we're here with someone who might be remembered in the German OER community because he gave a uh, quite impressive talk at the OER conference in 2013. That's Neil Butcher. Neil Butcher is uh, working as a strategist for OER Africa. And uh, we will talk about him while drinking a coffee. Uh, about what's missing in the OER debate. First, Neil, thanks for taking your time and uh, great to have you here. Right into it. What's missing? Um, well, nice to be talking to you again. Um, I think from what I've heard so far in this Congress and also from my work over the last year, I think probably the thing that's missing for me the most is a proper analysis of how procurement processes in government, which in my mind is still where most of the spending on education and educational resources resides, uh, get in the way of facilitating greater openness and sharing of OER. Um, so I think we talk a lot about the need for governments to invest in open educational resources, but I think this OER community is spending very little time engaging practically with the difficulties and challenges in working out how government processes actually function, um, what the constraints are that make it difficult to invest in open educational resources and openly licensed materials, and how policy reform can not just give in principle commitments from government to support OER, but actually can ensure that procurement processes are transformed to facilitate different kinds of investment. And I think I obviously work mostly in the developing world. I think the problem is very severe in the developing world. We're finding particularly that procurement departments in governments have very limited capacity. So their capacity to uh, push through a procurement of anything that is out of the ordinary is somewhat constrained. But I was speaking to someone from Norway yesterday and the impression I'm getting is that this is a problem that's shared around the world. So I think that at this government level, we should be focusing much more, much stronger attention, not on the principles anymore of OER, but on actually looking at the government mechanisms that are making the kinds of investments that everyone wants to make harder to make. Other places to go to, to, to learn from, maybe not in the, the field of education? Uh, I think so. Um, for, it's interesting, yesterday someone, for example, mentioned the whole issue of uh, toll roads where you know, a private contractor will build a toll road and then the ownership of that toll road will transfer across to government uh, and maybe someone will get the, the contract to, to run that toll road for 30 years or whatever the case might be. So I think there's certainly plenty of examples of how procurements can run differently. Um, I think the biggest challenge really though is to go into... So, so I do quite a lot of work for them at the moment for, for the World Bank And a lot of the time I spend is looking at government procurement processes. And I think if one just added a research exercise to that, to understand what the problems are, to understand what the blockages are, and then to look at how they could be solved, I don't think it's a question of very great innovation or creativity. I think we're just not applying our minds to solving that practical problem. My sense is that often people think that the problem is too big to solve, so we just kind of kick the can down the road, that expression meaning that you just postpone the problem, uh, and we rather just talk about the things that are easy. Um, but in my experience, the longer you put off finding solutions to the difficult problems, the longer it takes to solve them. So, so I think there are places we can look, but I don't really think that it's a major creative challenge. I think it's just something that requires determination, and then it will require strong political will as well, because political people are going to have to push through those changes to procurement processes. Um, so, yeah. It might also be a challenge to learn from mistakes because it's hard to, to talk about mistakes in this field. Um, well, so if one wants to learn about mistakes, I think that's really where one can go into education systems and look at procurement more generally. I don't think we have to look just at procurement in OER. I think we can look at how procurement processes work across the whole education system and we can learn from mistakes that I'm certainly seeing being made over and over and over again whether it be procuring, for example, technical services for education management information systems or textbook procurements or procurement of uh, hardware, for, you know, ICT hardware for classrooms. Uh, I see many mistakes being made over and over again uh, and I see lots of problems with capacity. I think we can learn immediately from all of that. So I don't think we have to wait and I don't think we have to uh, just focus inwardly on our own field. I think we can look more widely, see what the problems are and then work with governments to see how we can solve those problems. Very interesting. It was great talking to you. Uh, have a great second day of the Congress and uh, hope to see you again, maybe in Germany. Ah, I hope so. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you, OER Germany, for watching. We will have uh, four or five more interviews today here on Twitter. Follow at OER Info for more to come. Bye-bye.